Welcome to Electron Line and here's the third set of some uh, trigonometric functions that we need to evaluate. Now in this set, the angle is usually more than 2 pi. And so what happens when the angle is greater than 2 pi? You have to realize that, for example, for the sine, you can say that the sine of 0 is equal to the sine of 2 pi, which is equal to the sine of 4 pi, which is equal to the sine of 6 pi, and so forth. So you can see that Anytime you cross the boundary of 2 pi, things start over again. That's like going around the unit circle. So this would be an angle of 0 degrees. And if you go all the way around, okay, that would be an angle of 360 degrees, which is the same as pi. So we get 0 is equal to pi, uh, and if, uh, 2 pi, I should say. And then we go around a second time. So now we have an angle of 720 degrees, and that's an angle of 4 pi. And again, every time you go around the circle, every 2 pi, you start over again. So what we want to do with functions like this, the sine of 27 pi, is realize how many 2 pi you can subtract from that. For example, you can say that this is equal to the sine of 25 pi, which is equal to the sine of 23 pi, and so forth. So you know that 27 is actually 26 plus 1. So you can say that eventually you can say this is equal to the sine of a single pi. Let me write it like this, 26 pi plus pi. And of course, any multiple of 2 pi can just simply be taken out. You don't need it. And so you can write this as a sine of pi. Now pi, of course, that's 180 degrees. That gets us over here. And the sine of 180 degrees, that means there is a, the y value at that point is equal to 0. So you can simply call that 0. So the sine of 27 pi is the same as the sine of pi, which is equal to 0. Same with the cosine. 19 pi over 3 can be written as the cosine of 3 goes into 19, uh, that would be 6 times, so this would be the cosine of 6 pi plus 1 third pi. Remember, 6 pi plus 1 third pi is the same as 19 pi over 3. And again, 6 pi is a, that multiple of 2 pi, so you can simply take that out. This is equal to the cosine of 1 third pi, and then realize that the cosine of 1 third pi is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. That brings us right over here. That would be one third pi, like that. So the angle is equal to one third pi, which is equal to 60 degrees. And of course, the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to one half. All right, next, we have the tangent of minus 13 pi over 6. All right, hmm, I kind of took over this thing. I'm going to re redraw this one because I probably will need it. So here you go, there's the unit circle. There's my y-axis, my x-axis. All right, so how big is minus 13 pi over 6? Well, I can go in the negative direction, so I can actually go negative direction and see what that gives me. So I can say, well, that is a tangent of minus 2 pi minus 1 sixth pi, because 2 pi is the same as 12 over 6, and that leaves us with 1 sixth pi left, and they're both negative. Again, going in the negative direction, same thing. If I go all the way around the circle, negative 2 pi, so I can just simply ignore that. So this can be written as the tangent of minus 1 over 6 pi. And I can write this as the sine of minus 1 over 6 pi divided by the cosine of minus 1 over 6 pi. And notice that this is equal to minus the sine of 1 sixth pi divided by the cosine of 1 6 pi because the sine function is odd and the cosine function is even. And remember that 1 6 of a pi is 30 degrees, so this would be minus the sine of 30 degrees divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. And the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so this is equal to minus 1 half divided by the cosine of square root of 3. Uh, the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Notice the 1 over 2 cancels out, and finally this is minus 1 over the square root of 3, which is the final answer for the tangent of minus 13 pi over 6. And then I can come over here, and let's see here. Let's get rid of all that. There's a little bit more room. The cosecant of minus 14 pi over 3. Now the cosecant can be rewritten as 1 over the sine, and so this is equal to 1 over the sine, of minus 14 pi over 3. And of course, the sine of a negative angle is the same as the negative of the sine of that angle, so this is equal to 1 over negative sine of 14 pi over 3, 
which is equal to 1 over the negative sign. I can write this as a mixed number. 3 goes into 14. That's 4 times. That gives me uh, uh, 4 pi plus 2 thirds pi. All right. And again, the sine of 4 pi is the same as the sine of 0. So this can be written as 1 over minus the sine of 2 thirds pi. So any multiple of 2 pi can simply be dropped. Remember that 2 thirds of pi is equal to 120 degrees. So this is equal to 1 over minus the sine of 120 degrees, which places us right about here. So there would be 90 plus 30, that would be 120 degrees, which is equal to 2 thirds pi. And now we're trying to find the sine, which is this value right here, the y value of that side. And if this is 60, if this is 120 degrees and this is 60 degrees, so finding the sine of 120 degrees is the same as finding the sine of 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So this can be written as 1 over the negative square root of 3 over 2. And simply taking the inverse of that would be negative 2 over the square root of 3. And that would be the answer of the cosecant of minus 14 pi over 3. And that's how we do that.